Minister. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'd first like to thank all of the senators who participated in the debate, and I have to say that there was both a huge level, level of engagement and concern, but also a huge level of knowledge, so I'd like to thank everybody uh, for what they have said. Now, um, I suppose there are a couple of common themes, um, I think the main one being the importance of the community and of listening to what the community has to say, and as Senator Landy just said, of, of real consultation uh, with the community. And I just want to say, first of all, that um, that is a, an absolute priority for me as well. Um, and indeed, we had, as I said in my opening statements, 550 submissions uh, when we had the initial consultation. And we will have the further statutory consultation later in the year. And I would encourage, and I'm sure all of you will encourage people to, um, to put forward their views to the department. Uh, the, so that we will have, uh, so that we will have the views of the people in that balance. And indeed, I've been getting emails as well from people. And I think Senator Whelan is right. There is a, the women are very much leading in this, and um, there is a, a real and genuine concern being expressed. And um, it is our duty as legislators to ensure that we take those concerns on board. Now, we also have, and this is essentially about balance, because we also have to take the, the statutory um, obligations and the commitments that we've entered into and the importance of uh, renewable energy in terms of climate change, etc., of both our national and our international obligations. And we have to take those seriously as well. And I think everybody uh, in the debate has acknowledged that. Um, so just, uh, just in terms of, of the process, I think I have outlined it fairly clearly already. Um, insofar as um, that we will now look at all the submissions that we've received uh, and they will be taken into consideration in terms of draft guidelines and then the draft guidelines will be out for public consultation as well uh, for a period of six weeks up to two months and then there will be final guidelines uh, will be developed from that. Um, I suppose uh, the, uh, some of the subjects that were raised were, strictly speaking, a matter for Minister Rabbit and for government as a whole rather than for myself. But I know that people like Senator Barrett, Senator Clune, um, uh, Senator Mulcahy raised the sort of broader issues of value for money and the benefit to the country, etc. And um, I've no doubt that Minister Rabbit's department, and I know the Minister Rabbit's department, is, uh, you know, is working in those areas. And as I said, they are also, uh, they've also commissioned a study from SEAI uh, which will feed into our process, but it is, that is a somewhat limited study. It's not around the whole broader issue that were raised by the senators. But, um, you know, there are obviously much broader issues there as well uh, that have to be addressed. But I just want to, I suppose, refer to some of the other specifics that were raised. Um, a number of senators um, pointed to the whole issue of uh, consistency and having plans consistently applied and interpreted and that's something that I feel strongly about as well and I have been in touch with all of the local authorities with regard to what we call the hierarchy of plans in other words that plans should be in accordance with other plans and guidelines should be taken into account in the drafting of development plans um, but also the whole issue of enforcement because um, you know there is an issue uh, whereby local authorities some are better than others in the whole issue of enforcement and in the whole issue of um, ensuring that what they do complies with uh, with the various um, guidelines as i say and and statutory plans that are there um, so that that is an important issue as well i think it's important also to point out that the role of onboard planola is quite significant in all of this and um, that you know the right of people to appeal to onboard planola um, is there and is there to be used uh, by the public as well. Um, the issue of, um, I suppose, many people feel that there should be specific distances, and I know Senator Kelly and, and others feel that you know, this should be in legislation. Um, but I suppose the issue with using specific distances is that there is changing technology, and we're, we're dealing with changing technology all of the time. And uh, Senator Mulcahy just referred to the very large turbines that may or may not come down the tracks. Um, but we're certainly dealing with a technology that is constantly changing. And in the area of noise in particular, um, there are a number of factors that, that influence uh, the effect of noise on the people uh, who are living or indeed working or, or at school or whatever uh, near proposed uh, developments. So I think you know, it is reasonable that um, we would wait, first of all, for the expertise uh, uh, and for the peer review. Part of Minister Rabbit's um, 
Minister Abbott's study is around a peer review of other practices in other countries and knowledge that we can gain from other countries. And again, I think you know, we need to learn from other countries. Uh, people refer to Scotland and other parts of the world. Um, you know, we need to learn whatever there is to learn in what is a very rapidly changing situation. Um, and you know, we do intend to, to ensure that we learn whatever we can. Uh, but we are dealing with, with technology that's changing all the time. And uh, the original guidelines that were drawn up were drawn up at a time when turbines were much lower than the ones that are projected to come into place now. But I suppose I do also need to point out that, um, you know, the suggestion, for example, that you might have a distance of a thousand um, of a thousand metres. Um, the university, um, NUI Maynooth, have done some studies, and they would suggest that if you're talking about a, a one kilometre setback, that you're talking about only 9.4 percent of the country actually being even available for consideration for wind turbines. If that is the if that is the setback. Uh, and with higher ones, um, you know, that, that would obviously, if, if you were having a further back setback for higher turbines, that would mean even less of the country being available. So, I mean, that is a reality that um, I know that Minister Abbott's department um, has that data from NUI Maynooth. And that is a reality that, um, that has to be, you know, part of the consideration as well. So, I mean, I suppose I'm trying to express to you here in the Senate that there are a lot of considerations uh, that have to be taken into account. But I do accept, and I do think that, that that has been very strongly expressed here, that the view of the community has got to be there to the fore. And I think there is a sense, perhaps, that uh, that, you know, that that is something that is not being taken into consideration. Uh, and I just want to assure you that certainly from my perspective, that is a view that will be taken into consideration and, and should be. Um, because, you know, that is, as public representatives, we have to ensure that the views of local people are, are a very central part of the consideration, while we also have to um, ensure that we reach targets that are binding targets uh, and that we exploit the opportunities uh, that, are, you know, are very real uh, opportunities for the country in terms of our natural advantage with regard to a number of renewable technologies uh, and renewable energies that, that we have in this country. Um, so uh, again, I would like to thank everybody who has contributed to the debate. Um, I have tried to respond uh, as directly as I can to the points that were raised, but if there are others that people have raised, um, then you know, do feel free to, to um, come to me and give me your views. Um, the process, I've outlined the time frame on the process, and uh, we can keep you informed. Uh, with regard to progress in that regard. And um, I'm sure when we get to the point of um, issuing the draft guidelines for consideration, um, I'm sure that there will be uh, very strong views expressed by people in this House who I know have very strong views on this issue. So thank you very much for thank the you. opportunity to, to have the debate, and thank you to everybody who contributed. Minister Wright, thank you very much. And um, could I ask the Acting Leader to suspend the House until 3, three o'clock, please? I ask at uh, 3 o'clock for the next sitting. Okay, is that great? Thank you.